Happy birthday, John Lear. The Bob Lazar birthday gift. Periodic table of elements. Element John Lear. The periodic table of 116 is JL. It's a human solvent. The atomic mass is 256.89. Occurrence found priorly, primarily in Nevada. Physical properties. It is rare on stable element. It is best known <laughs> for its remarkable ability to resist common sense and facts. Uh -huh. Applied liberally, JL has been known to improve the quality of lawns. It is also known to absorb great quantities of expensive substances. <laughs> it is one of the most money-reducing agents known to man. Prolonged exposure to this element can cause severe physical, mental, and financial damage. So he gave you that white mug that's in the picture there. So yeah. that's what we need to be looking for here. Yeah. Mug here, I don't know if this is the one you're looking for. Yeah. Is this it? Okay, so you wanted to show us this from Bob Lazar, is that right? Yeah. That he gave me for my birthday. Okay. <laughs> Very well, cool. Um, Element 116, John Lear. That's, that's charming. So I guess he wrote something on here as well. Well, this is a Paiute ma Mesa here. Okay, between this is, I should have a magnifying glass. Right up here is the Tonopah Test Range. Right. And Groom Lake is right here. Oh, yeah? And this is the Paiute Mesa. All right. And this is where the new Sika base is. And as they uh, knew, it's 20 years old because when I was employed by the Nevada test site to fly the perimeter of where they would set off underground nuclear blasts, my job was in the morning I would continuously fly the perimeter and going up and down from uh, ground level to 10,000 feet and giving the wind so that they were sure that if it vented by accident that they knew which way the, the bad stuff was going to blow. Oh, wow. So during that time, I saw them take off the top of the mountain right here. And only later did I find that that's where they were going to build Sandia, which was the new secret base where they're removing everything from NORAD and every place too in central Nevada. So Groom Lake is just out of sight there. Anyway, these are two lakes, um, dry lakes. This is where Sandia was built. They took the top off a mountain, built Sandia under the, what they took off, and then put the top back on. And in there are five holes uh, about several hundred feet in diameter, and they go down a mile. Wow. And they hold 25,000 combat troops, each one. And the reason we know that is because a friend of Bob's father drove uh, the cement truck, one of the cement trucks, and he said there was hundreds of cement trucks all day long going in and out, in and out, and driving down, spiraling down that uh, hole. And that's called Sandia. And now people say, oh, Sandia, that's the Sandia Mountain Range in Albuquerque <laughs> and Sandia Corporation. Right. I said yes, because now what they're doing is naming the new stuff, the old name, so that if somebody accidentally mentions that, it won't register as, as a new area. Right. So yeah, that's right. The, um, a lot of misdirects around Sandia. It turns out I have a piece of paper that 
somebody got off the internet it was by accident on a military channel and it says that where my mine was out in uh, the South Virgin Mountains that Sandia extends all the way out there and many occasions we saw SUVs, white SUVs um, driving around there and sometimes we'd follow them and they'd disappear into thin air. <laughs> and I showed that to one of the BLM Rangers and he was a little bit he didn't believe it at first and then he came in one morning and he said, God damn it, I saw one of those things and I found them and <laughs> lost it. That's great. And uh, So yeah, so they have those uh, false entrances and those what? false entrances yeah. and mountains that uh, you know. Yeah, there's one down by Nelson Landing and uh, the guy that is not with BLN anymore, he was going to move somewhere this guy was nuts but as most people with BLMR and uh, he was patrolling a wash near um, the Nelson landing and he said he came upon a a huge door that was open and he kind of looks inside here and there's all kinds of computer equipment and typewriters and everything and and he tried to move the door and it wouldn't move. So he called the number, only number he had for Creech Air Force Base. And at that time, I think it was still Indian Springs. And he said, I'm down here at Nelson and uh, you guys better come down here because there's a door that's, that's open. And they said, don't know what you're talking about, sir. And he said, okay, <laughs> you may not know what I'm talking about, but there's a door, and it's open, and somebody needs to come down here and close it. And a voice comes on and says, I'm sorry, sir, I don't know what you're talking about. And then a completely vo different voice comes on and says, stay right there, we'll be there in 15 minutes, don't move. <laughs> Great and stuff. And he came down with a helicopter, and he just, he walked away, he didn't want to know anything about it because it's, so many of those secret places down there. Um, now right here is the Sandia office, laboratory, and sleeping quarters. And here is where they have a new strip. Now I'll show you on the Google map that there's nothing indicated. I mean, it's just <laughs> right. like just grass. Yeah, like we, it always was. we noticed that as well, uh, actually. On the way down here, on the side of, on the 51 side of so-called, of area of 95, that tour, going in that direction, there's nothing. Yeah. Zero. So, uh, so they've blacked the whole thing out. This you have to drive in quite a bit, and I gave George Knapp a complete set of accurate directions of how to get there, and what they have now is is a way of hiding stuff. Um, they have a little machine they can set up and it will hide, hide roads or hide buildings or hide anything and in this case it hid the cutoff that George was supposed to take to, to find that new strip there and uh, he never did find it. He wound up at the entrance to the Tonopah test train. So, oh, right. um, I haven't been up there and I don't drive up there anymore, but anyway, this is where the new strip is and there's two strips and these were described to me by a, a, uh, um, mine inspector who has to inspect cement mines or any kind of mine and they, there's a cement, uh, facility there that's used to uh, supply the, the strips and everything else that they're building around there. And so he told me, took him out to lunch, he said they built two strips, the north, north, uh, west to southeast, and he said in the middle of these strips there's a hangar that goes from one end of the strips to the other. And I said, well I know what that is. They said, 
what they can do is test an airplane out of one set of hangars uh, and use that runway so that the other people on the other side can't see it and uh, and then the, when they're done the people on the other side can uh, bring their airplane out and and uh, fly on the other side and uh, nobody can see it so that's what those trips are and then he said at the at the at the uh, as the road comes around here to the other side of these trips he said there's these little igloos they're about eight feet high they're just like igloos shaped like igloos and there's two and there was five of them and he said there's two armed guards in front of each one with their weapons at port arms like that and uh, he said there's two um, guard shacks one when you get near the place and then right after that is obvious the place where they the sleeping quarters and stuff like that and the other is when you get close enough that you're actually getting into the the uh, aircraft base itself so let me find this igloos that's oh, they, really bizarre igloo don't know what the hell could be in there well yeah. As we drove down the 95, you know, there is a place before you get to Vegas that does have this really weird little white, um, I don't know, huts kind of carved into a, a white basalt kind of like... Yeah, that's it. You think that's it? Well, it sounds like There was tons of them, though. I don't know about... They didn't have guards at this one, but this is, this is some kind of natural land formation that I don't understand. It's just... It crops up over there. Have you heard about the high-speed maglev train that goes from Luxor to uh, Sandia? Lux oh, from the Luxor? Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, I, I thought I had, but why don't you go ahead and tell us more about it? Because that's okay, actually well, the great. Special Projects Airplane 737's Park, uh, right across from the Luxor, into the western side of the McCarran Airport and that's where the 737s park and uh, they just built a brand new hangar facility it's really it looks cool it looks space age and uh, so uh, all they have to do if somebody comes in from out of town and they're going to Sandia all they have to do is get out of the airplane at the Sandia base, um, get on the uh, moving walkway, and it takes you, first the escalator takes you down, and then the moving walkway takes you um, quite a ways to directly under the Luxor where their parking is. They get out of the walkway and uh, they can go where the uh, parking is but also what there is is a, uh, a uh, high-speed maglev train that can get to Groom Lake in, in 10 minutes.